So I want to show you guys a trick if you're curious to know if your radiator or your fan's moving enough air. In this box from LMR, we got a new radiator. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this was like a, maybe a blim. Uh, this was on sale for like 150 bucks at the time. It's an SVE radiator, so these are really good uh, as it stands. But I want to say that maybe this one didn't have the logo on it or something. Anyway, I got it for like 150 bucks uh, off LMR's site. So if you guys are interested and they still have some more of these, you might want to check this out. to the wise most of you already know this but I almost made this mistake when you go to pick your radiator up out of the box or really from anywhere it's very tempting to grab it like this as you can see if you squeeze right here you're gonna bend these fins and I almost did that not that it's really going to affect the radiator but you know when you pay this much money for something new you don't want it all messed up so be careful when you take it out of the box and make sure you're grabbing it from the sides right here so if you have an automatic transmission this radiator will work for you or you can just leave them plugged if you have a manual. So I've been having issues with the Carbon Fox running hot pretty much ever since we built the new engine. Actually, it's ran hot ever since I got the car. And I assume it's gonna come down to the condenser. Now this radiator alone is gonna do a lot better job of keeping this car cool. At the moment, you can't even start the car because it's spraying transmission fluid everywhere. So uh, regardless, we're gonna go ahead and do this. If the car does not cool like I feel like it should, then we'll go ahead and get a condenser. It's a good test, right? You guys like a good test. Let's go ahead and get started. Always use a line wrench when it comes to brake lines, fuel lines, um, you know, transmission lines, anything like that. Make sure you use a line wrench or you'll strip these things out around the heads of them all. As you can see, we've removed both transmission lines now. And you're also gonna have to take this adapter off. You're gonna have to swap those over. We'll talk about that in a minute. Body tool tray right there. Lift your shroud and your fan all at one time. Otherwise, um, another option, I mentioned this plenty of times before, but you can actually cut this shroud down here like this and then it'll come up around, or actually I think it's down here, and it'll come up around your fan, but I don't recommend doing that because it does, you sacrifice some cooling whenever you do that. Really? Uh, it, not horrible. I've seen worse, but it definitely could use some straightening out. So I may play around with this and we'll see if we can't straighten some of it out. But that's definitely going to decrease airflow when it's all bent up like this. But like I said, I have seen worse. So we'll see what we can do here. All right, so let's go ahead and cover the issue of not buying a new condenser. Why would I do that? Well, it's always good to save a buck, right? And I know that there are fin tools that you can buy and rake through your radiator or your condenser or whatever the case may be, but why not use what's on hand? Also, if you've ever used a comb tool, you'll know these big flat areas are really hard to manage. You can actually mess your radiator up or your condenser worse than what it was. This is probably one of the main reasons your car runs hot, especially after you, like you replace a radiator and you just can't figure it out, you replace the fan, it's probably the condenser. The condenser was so beat and banged up that no air could get through it. So I think we fixed this one good enough and I'll go ahead and show you guys what we did. The biggest thing to take away from this is bend your fins back enough to where air will circulate through them. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're not perfect, they just need air to move by them. All right, next up, we'll go ahead and put our adapters in the new radiator and put this thing back together.
Now we just want to go in and reinstall our lines first down here since nothing's in the way. We'll get that done. We'll reinstall our fan, our shroud, hook everything else back up and throw some water in this thing. What we're going to do is go ahead and start it up and make sure that we're not leaking transmission fluid because that was a problem as to why we swapped this thing out to start with. Once we can verify that it's not leaking, <laughs> it's going to leak right there. This thing is almost rounded off from years of not using the line wrench. We're admiring that you want to crank this car up, but we don't have a... Oh, a battery. A battery. As you all probably do know in the brutal shop, everything is missing batteries. They just get swapped around. They do. So on this car, if the fuel pump continually runs like that after you pull the battery out, that means that it lost its tune. So I think the battery's dead in the uh, computer, in the quarter horse. Great. Yeah, so we lost our tune. Because that thing's only supposed to run for like five seconds. So I'm going to go inside, grab the computer, load the tune back in it, and then we'll start it up. Yeah, we'll try again. Great. This is a red, green button. Pay me for my time. I'm not worth much. So I want to show you guys a trick if you're curious to know if your radiator or your fan's moving enough air. Here's a nice little trick. Now this should, when we stick it up in front of the condenser, uh, hold itself up. Let's see. dollar bill or something like that. If you're like donating your rich, you can use a hundred dollar bill. It's fine. It will hold quarters, guys. I've already yeah. tried. It, this car needed this radiator anyway, uh, and it needed those spins to be cleaned out, so we shouldn't have any overheat problems. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. We'll drive the car in another video, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>